How did we get here? Oh, I know. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Come on, people. Open your Bibles. Actually, in the beginning was the Atman, and out of the Atman came the cosmos and the gods. Come on, people. Open up your Upanishads. Today, we have a special guest, Professor Stick. Hey, guys. It's an honor to be here. This will be a two-part series, so you can head over to his channel when you're ready for part two. Link in the description. One of the most popular potential answers that has been a hot topic filled with misinformation is evolution. Misinformation which also includes claims that evolutionists have made about the origins of life. You know that evolution has nothing to do with the origin of life, right? Evolution and abiogenesis are two completely different concepts and two completely different processes. Evolution is only a theory. The meaning of the word theory is really what's in question here. Within the scientific community, it has a different meaning than outside of it. Dictionary.com defines a scientific theory as a coherent group of prepositions formulated to explain a group of facts or phenomena. Notice how I highlighted repeatedly confirmed through experiment or observation. That's significant. I'll come back to this and explain why later. Yes, exactly. A scientific theory is the best explanation we have for a certain event. It holds the same weight and can sometimes hold more weight than a scientific law. And Darwin's theory of evolution is a theory, so it's basically a fact. Oh, and by the way, the theory of evolution only describes Darwin's theory, aka natural selection, not evolution itself. Darwin's theory is only a way of describing how evolution happened, because that's how categorization in science works. If it's an explanation, like natural selection, it's a theory once it's been proven. Evolution itself is not an explanation, therefore not a theory. It's simply a fact. For years before Darwin, scientists have known that evolution happens, they just don't know how it happens. That's where Darwin came in and developed his theory. It frustrates me so much how stupid creationists such as yourself always think that Darwin's theory and evolution are the same thing. It's not. If you're going to attempt to debunk evolution, at least get the definitions and categories right. However, when it comes to evolution, there's enough proof for experts to consider it a credible explanation for humanity existing how we are today. Let's see what some of his examples of that proof is. He never said he'd give proof, he's only stating that there is proof. But, if you want, here's a Wikipedia article that lists lots of proof which took me like 5 seconds to Google. In fact, the vast majority of scientists accept evolution and refer to fields such as embryology, paleontology, and molecular biology as research for backing its existence. Okay, so his main example of proof for the theory of evolution is that most scientists believe in evolution, so I guess that means it's true? No, he never said that was proof, but it does indicate that there's good reason to believe it. What about some actual scientific proof of evolution? To be fair, he did say that paleontology is used by evolutionary scientists to support their claims. But does that really hold up to critical analysis? Paleontology is the branch of science dealing with fossils. However, the fossil record is at a complete loss when it comes to proving evolution. That is some serious bullshit you're putting forth. We are not lost. The fossil record gives us so much evidence. In fact, it allowed us to build the tree of evolution so well we could even predict where to find certain fossils, such as the Tiktaalik, the first fish with legs. Tell me, have you ever been to a natural history museum? Or studied biology at the very least? Oh, no? Then shut the fuck up! The reason being is that evolution teaches that man and other life forms evolved from lower forms of life in a process that took millions of years. But the problem with this is, there are no complete fossils in the fossil record to prove that. We have many complete remains of humans and various apes, but there have been no complete remains of anything in between. We should literally have millions of complete remains of transitional life forms in the ground all around us if evolution really took place. Oh, man, I hate it when you creationists use the word transitional. You're purposely misleading the people with that word. First of all, every fossil we find is transitional. The fact that you're using the word like that clearly demonstrates you have no proper knowledge in ecological biology. In other words, every animal right now is transitional, eventually to become species of the future. It's the same for animals in the past. Everything, by definition, is transitional. 
so please stop using words you don't know how to use. Second, fossils are incredibly rare compared to the number of organisms that existed. In order for a fossil to be preserved in the ground, it requires very specific conditions. Fossils of human ancestors are even harder to preserve, partly due to the fact that our ancestors like to live near water sources, which can disrupt the remains. The only thing that evolutionary scientists have been able to produce is a tabletop full of bone fragments which they claim came from transitional type species. And some of these have been discovered to have been complete hoaxes, like Piltdown Man. <laughs> I love how you brought this up. Yes, the Piltdown Man was indeed a hoax. See, if you're right, I'll tell you that you're right. However, we only found that the Piltdown Man was a hoax due to it being inconsistent with the fossil record. We found a ton of other fossils that all support our evolutionary tree. Then we looked back at the Piltdown Man and we realized it was fake due to it not conforming with the fossil record. So this example actually works against you. It was due to the fact that our fossil record was so strong that we noticed its forgery. Please just read one fucking paragraph on Wikipedia or something. With the exception of accusations from anti-evolution sources, there is no claim that human beings actually evolved from little monkeys. Actually, Charles Darwin wrote in chapter 6 of his book entitled The Descent of Man, the Simiidae then branched off into two great stems, the New World and the Old World monkeys. And from the latter, at a remote period, man, the wonder and glory of the universe, proceeded. He did not say that we evolved from a common ancestor of apes, as evolutionists claim today. He said we proceeded from old world monkeys. You do know that Darwin, peace be upon him, was using a different definition of monkeys than you, right? If you look up old and new world monkeys, you'll find that new world monkeys are Platerini and old world monkeys are Caterini. He explains this earlier in the book, but you obviously haven't read it that much. Humans are not currently evolving. What if I told you that only 2,000 years ago, human beings could not handle ingesting milk after the age of five? But one day, somebody, well, mutated into having a gene that allowed us to drink milk for the rest of our lives. And then that person procreated, and that person procreated with more, and they all just, and now here we are. You see, we are still, and likely forever will, be biologically evolving. What Matthew Santaro just did is the old bait and switch. Holy shit, man, that's not bait and switch. Do you even know what bait and switch is? It's a logical fallacy that's extremely specific, which Matthew is not using here. I feel like you're trying to use these terms without even putting it into Google first, you little prick. He used an example of microevolution, which is basically adaptation. In this case, the ability to adapt to drinking milk to support macroevolution, which is changing from one kind of animal to another. Firstly, I absolutely hate it when you creationists use micro and macro evolution. The only difference between these two is time. Lots of micro evolution equals macro evolution. You guys love to separate it to two different things. The fact that you don't accept macro evolution really shows something about your imaginative powers. We have millions and billions of years to work with here. Eventually, when two populations of the same species are no longer able to reproduce, you get two species. It's as simple as that. And when this happens multiple times, we eventually get a huge diversity of species. Since we have millions and billions of years to work with, that happens a lot. Second, stop using the word kinds. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's not even a scientific word. The word species, for example, is very specific and is based solely on the ability to reproduce between organisms. Kinds has nothing. It's just a vague term you creationists love to use to mislead people. Although microevolution is scientific and humans and other species do have the ability to adapt to their environments, macroevolution is not scientific because humans and other forms of life do not have the ability to transform themselves into other animals. What a fucking bold claim you got there. Where's your paper? If you're so confident, why don't you write a scientific paper on it and change everything we know on ecology, taxonomy, genetics, paleontology, and medicine? Yeah, let's just throw away 150 years of work. You know, just because we can't observe large changes in species doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It's like a detective going to a crime scene. Just because the detective didn't personally witness the crime doesn't mean he can't figure out what happened. The DNA code barrier prevents this. There is no such thing as the DNA code barrier. That's just made up. You people love to make shit up, don't you? 
Evolution is not testable. This is yet another myth the anti-evolution movement uses to try to disprove the idea. But the truth is, in a laboratory setting, evolution can be studied with controlled experiments. One such experiment involves testing antibiotic resistance, studying organisms with lifespans that are incredibly short. These tests have shown that after being exposed to antibiotics, certain subpopulations of microorganisms can evolve into super bugs, gaining the ability to actually survive the antibiotics. Again, the old bait and switch. Matthew Santaro used an example of bacteria resistance to support macro evolution. It's true that bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics and this has been demonstrated in lab tests. But notice what didn't happen here. That bacteria didn't transform itself into another life form. Therefore, evolution, that is macro evolution, which is the process of one kind of life form or animal transforming itself into another kind of life form or animal is not testable. Again, they're the same thing. Macroevolution can have many definitions, none of which you'll be satisfied with, but what they have in common is that they take incredibly long periods of time. So we can't directly observe macroevolution, but we do see evidence of it, even evidence of changing kinds, like the Pachycetus becoming big fishes. This brings me back to the definition of a scientific theory, which is something that can be repeatedly confirmed through experiment or observation. Macroevolution doesn't even qualify for this because it hasn't been proven through experimentation and it can't be observed. Actually, direct observation of macroevolution has been observed, depending on your definition, of course. We've seen human cancer cells become hella cells, organisms in their own right. But we can still confirm macroevolution through observation. Even if we couldn't observe it directly, we could still observe evidence for it, though you're going to continue to deny all of them. Because there are no transitional type species around us today. In other words, there is no evolution happening around us. You do know that transitional species don't need to survive, right? Animals typically keep evolving, we keep changing. We don't need transitional species to still be alive in order for them to have existed. But if you look at all the feline animals, you can see clear evidence of common descent. And evolution is happening all around us. We just talked about how we're still evolving. It's just microevolution because we can't see it on a large timescale. Therefore, macroevolution isn't even scientific. As a matter of fact, it takes more faith to believe in macroevolution than creation. Because at least we Bible-believing creationists have someone who claims he was there at the beginning of creation. God. And that account was written down in the Bible. So it takes less faith to take the word of Middle Easterners of thousands of years ago than it is to deny major sections of modern scientific consensus. It takes less faith to believe in giants than it does to believe in Homo erectus. It's funny how you deny macroevolution because you can't observe it, but you think the idea of worshipping a specific unseen god is completely rational. There are no intermediate fossil forms. Such fossils have in fact been found. In fact, recent discoveries have been found that show that dinosaurs had hair and feathers, supporting the theory that they are an ancestor of common day birds. That doesn't prove that dinosaurs are ancestors of birds. At the most, it proves that initial beliefs of dinosaurs having no hair or feathers were incorrect. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you actually just studied this for one goddamn second, you wouldn't be making such outrageous claims. We found that dinosaurs slowly developed wings and feathers. Dinosaurs way in the past had none of these features. As time passes, we see in the fossil record that they slowly changed their body structure and developed hair and feathers. You can almost see them transform into birds. Just go to a fucking natural history museum for fuck's sake. Additionally, intermediate fossils between fish and amphibians have been found. My guess is that Matthew Centaro was talking about the Tiktaalik fossil discovered in 2006, which is this guy at the bottom of the screen. Evolutionary scientists say that this fish looks like a cross between the primitive fish it lived amongst and the first four-legged animals a group called tetrapods. They say this fossil has characteristics of both fish and land animals, mainly its fins, which they claim could also act as legs. I'm guessing it's only a matter of time before this gets debunked. Huh, <laughs> you're saying he's probably talking about this completely legitimate scientific proof of what he's saying, but I'll find a way to object to it eventually. 
I guess that's just how anti-science works. Click the annotation to see part 2 on Professor Stick's channel.